Copying is a great way to learn. So to get an eye for good UI and UX, I'll be copying applications and websites that I like and use regularly while making minor adjustments. We're going to create a Pinterest clone, but Pinterest is a large application with many pages and interactions. So instead of making a very long video, I'll create a new playlist of short ones. Each video will be focused on doing one specific thing. I will begin by copying the design of Pinterest's homepage for desktop. And in this video, we'll create a quick wireframe for the home page to get an overall idea of how we will place elements inside the page. Even if you are an absolute Figma beginner, you can follow along this video. No steps will be skipped. First, we'll take a screenshot of the page we'll work on. The screenshot will be useful to grab colors from and to have a quick in-page reference. Open the Pinterest homepage in a new tab and take a screenshot of it. To take a screenshot on a Mac, I press Command Shift 3. I will create a new Figma design file and place the screenshot image. To place an image, go to the Shape Tools, press on the drop down menu and choose Place Image. Then select your file and press on the canvas to drop the image. I will quickly grab the colors from the screenshot. I'll press O to grab the ellipse tool and press on the canvas to drop a circle. While the circle is selected, I will press I to grab the eyedropper tool, then I will start selecting colors from the image. I will press Shift A to add an auto layout frame around the circle for easy copying. Then I will select the circle and press Command C, Command V. Press I to grab the eyedropper tool again, select another color to have another circle, Command V, and so on. Then I'll create color styles from them. So I'll select the first circle, then at the design panel, fill options, I will press on style, then create style, and I will give this style a name. The second circle, style, give it a name, and so on. By creating color styles and using them on new elements, if we decide to adjust a color, we do it once, and then every element that has that color style will be updated. Since we will leave everything in one page, I like to frame related elements. So I will select both, right click on them, and press frame selection. Name the frame screenshot. From the design panel, give it a stroke, Make the stroke five pixels, give it rounded corners of 30, then put it at the center of the frame. Generally, a web page has a header, body, and a footer. Here is our header, the nav with the logo and the search bar and the drop down menu, and the pins are the body. Only the footer here is placed to the right side. I will press F to grab the frame tool. From the design panel, select a MacBook Pro 16 inch frame. I will press R to grab the rectangle tool then draw a placeholder for the header. Just by eyeing it, the height of it does not matter for now. I press R again to grab the rectangle tool, then I will draw the footer. As for the pin, the web page has five pins next to each other. The pins touch the bottom of the header and the left side of the footer, and they are centered with space on their left equal to the space on the right. I press R to grab the rectangle tool again and draw the pin. The height does not matter, but I will experiment with the width to be able to make five pins next to each other within this page. I will create a temporary component out of this rectangle so that I can edit it once and experiment with all the pins that will be inside the page. I will grab the pin by pressing and holding the Alt key to copy it and take an instance of it. Now if I make any changes to this component, the instance that we took will automatically update. I will select the instance inside our frame and press Shift A to add an auto layout to it for easy copying. At the design panel, auto layout settings, I will remove the padding around it. Now I will select the rectangle and press Command C, Command V to copy it. I will select the frame and add a distance of 20 pixels instead of 10 between the pins. Then while having the frame selected, I will hover towards the left side of the frame and hold the Alt key to see the distance on each side. So on this side, the distance is 79 pixels, but on the right side, it's 139. 139 minus 79, 60 pixel difference. So we need to reduce the size by 60 pixels. So 60 divided by 5 is 12. So each one of those rectangles needs to be reduced by 12 pixels. So 286 minus 12, 274. So let's change the size to 274 pixels. Then let's stick this frame and put it in place. And now again, let's hover to the left side of the frame and press and hold the Alt key. And now the distance is equal on both sides of the frame. It doesn't need to be that specific in this stage because these measurements will change when we make the design because the size of the header and the footer will change. Now, as you can see in the Pinterest design, the width of a pin is fixed. 
but the height differs depending on the image. So to be able to put our rectangles in the same way those pins are placed, I will select this frame and change it from horizontal direction to vertical direction. I will take a copy of this frame by pressing and holding the Alt key. Then I will select both of those frames and add another auto layout around them by pressing Shift A. I will call it Body. I will copy it again by pressing Command C, Command V, Command V, Command V. Then I will select the Body frame, add the Design panel, Auto Layout Settings. I will change the spacing between items to 20 pixels. I will grab the Body frame, make sure I put it in place. I also select the Rectangle Component frame here then select the rectangle inside it and add a 30 pixel corner radius to it. And as you can see, all our rectangles are updated. Finally, I will just manually vary the height of the pins to have the same effect as the Pinterest page. Also, the distance between the pins vertically is larger than the distance between them horizontally. So I will select the body frame and press enter to select all the frames inside it. Then I will change the distance to 14 instead of 20. Then again, to remain organized, I will select both of those elements, right click and press frame selection. I'll call this frame wireframe. I will add a stroke to it of five pixels, give it rounded corners, then center the items inside it. We're done with this very first video in the Pinterest clone playlist. And in the next video, we start working on the actual design and create all the components for the homepage.